Good afternoon and welcome to this outdoor edition of House Calls with Dr. Teta. Today's Saturday, March 21st, and it felt like more reason than any to go outside instead of being indoors today. And I'm going to share a little about your immune system. You know you have one because that's what helps keep you protected from daily um, things you might encounter and just minor illnesses here and there. But I bet you've wondered, well, how does it really work? Well, your immune system is made out of different cells, and I won't go into too much depth, depth, but you have T cells, you have B cells, and all these are in your blood. And what happens is when your body encounters something it's never seen before, these cells go out and they hunt it down. They hunt it down and say, what are you? Get out of the body, we need to get rid of you. And one of the first ways your body responds when it has something come in that's not supposed to be there, your body turns up the temperature because that's the way it's saying, hey, whatever this thing is, let's burn it up, get it out of here. Also, when it brings up the blood body temperature, when your body temperature goes up, it also causes your blood vessels to dilate or get bigger. When they get bigger, it's sort of like thinking about a highway. A highway that suddenly gets wider means you have more cars that can get through. In your body, when the blood vessels get bigger, that means more cells can go through. And when those cells go through, that means they're rushing to where this infection is so they can fight it. Also, this whole process I just described is also called having a fever. So having a fever can happen when your body is fighting an infection that's bacterial or viral. Whichever way, it's your body's way of saying, hey, something's here that shouldn't be inside of me and we need to get rid of it. The primary spaces of your body that protect you from getting things inside that shouldn't be there are your skin. Your skin is actually an organ of your body. As you know, it covers you from head to toe. And anytime there's a break in the skin surface, like when you get a cut or something like that, Usually the first thing we tell you to do is wash it with soap and water because with a break in the skin, that means things that could harm you can get in. Oftentimes, we'll have you wash that cut or scrape and put a bandage over it to help protect you from having anything else coming in through that break in your defense system and then getting to the rest of your body. The spaces where we usually have breaks where things can infect our body are the eyes, inside the nose and the mouth and other areas that I won't go into right now. This is why oftentimes when we talk about catching viruses, we talk about being aware of our mucosal surfaces because inside your mouth, that pink layer in there is called a mucosal surface. You have it within your eyes as well. And those are areas where things can easily enter into your body. So oftentimes when we talk about colds, I know as a kid I was also told if you go outside in the winter without your coat on, you'll catch a cold. Well, sorry to disappoint people, but you catch colds usually from other people. And that's oftentimes because if you have a sneeze or if you're coughing, people usually cough in their hands or sneeze in their hands. And when you do that, the next thing you do is you go grab the remote You go touch the phone, you grab a pen, and then whatever particles from your hand, or even if you blow your nose and the mucus there, those all carry their virus and that it can spread to others. Which is why we always talk so much about washing your hands. When you wash your hands, you're cleaning off any of those infectious things that could be on them and lead them to getting into your body, especially through your mouth, and through your eyes or your nose. So, this is one of those things that's very common that young children do not really understand sometimes. So, for kids, especially under age four, we encourage you to watch watch them, watch where they go, because at their age, they're gonna explore things by sticking them in their mouth. I say this in the office very frequently, and it's the truth, germs go to daycares, they go to preschool, they go to kindergartens to party because young kids don't always wash their hands. So to stop them in their tracks and keep them from getting anywhere, we wash them. 
So when we talk about our immune system, our body can build up a defense against things that we've been exposed to in the past. And the difference is with viruses, this is something that you can't take an antibiotic for. A virus lives by replicating a number of times in your body. And usually you just sort of get through that time, be it you rest, you take fluids, and you wait for the virus to run its course. But it also means that if you've had a virus, when you were exposed to it, if you're exposed to it again, there's a chance of you having symptoms again. So then you're probably wondering, well then what do we do against these things? This is why we have immunizations. Immunizations give your body a small version of a disease and it says, hey body, let's send this to you and then I'm gonna have you build up the cells and the antibodies to fight it. So that if your body ever sees that illness, you will be defense, defended against it. And so that's really how immunizations work. They're taking your body's ability to fight infection and training it up to fight those other infections without having to go through having the illness yourself. I mean, that's a very simplified version, but I promise you, it's essentially how they really work. So during this time, as we're spending more time at home and not doing other, a lot of other things, Keep in mind that you're doing something good right now. You're helping us keep you from other people because that's how viruses live. They can live on surfaces and other things from time to time, but more or less it comes down to it, they pass from person to person. So during this time, remember that it is still okay to go outside. This is not like in California when we have fires and you're told don't go outside unless you really need to because the air quality is poor. The air quality is fine. We can go outside. You can take a walk. If you see a basketball hoop at the park, yes, you can go play. You can go shoot hoops, but you can't play with someone else. Keeping your distance from other people is to help make sure that if you have an illness or if they have the Ill an illness, you're not passing it to one another. During this time, let's all try to do our part and keep each other safe and healthy. This is all today for House Calls. We'll be back again on Monday. During this time, make sure you're taking care of yourself and your own health too. So take that walk, do a jog, just get your blood pumping because one way for your immune system to stay strong is if you're being healthy as well. By having a healthy diet, getting exercise, and having enough sleep. Okay? Thank you for your time. We'll catch you again on Monday. And as Dixie Witt said in my first year of medical school all the time, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands.